Hey folks, Justin from Tackle Tactics, geared up and ready to roll. Today we're fishing something a little bit different. The water has started to clear a bit out there and there's a lot of bait fish flicking around. So I'm going to represent that bait fish with a Z-Man 3.75 inch streaks. So it's a realistic bait fish profile, a small jerk bait profile. So the cool thing about that is it looks very much like a bait fish. It's got that tiny little tail that flicks around and you can see there about half the plastic is sort of tail compared to body. So it folds away very easily, which means a brim has no problem eating it along with flathead and all sorts of other species. It's actually one of the most versatile plastics that you can fish. That thin tail means there's not a lot of drag or built in action which allows us long casts in windy conditions. It means we can get the plastic down quick on a light jig head. And it also means that it really does have a lot of action when we impart it. So a few flicks and twitches, and you're almost flat out keeping that tail still. So darts around like a bait fish, erratic retrieve that can often really switch on that feeding desire of the fish to smash that bait fish. So you'll see guys fish it in a million different ways. You know, unweighted, totally unweighted on the chin locks, finesse hook. You can twitch it on the surface for trevally and brim and different species. Put it on a hidden weight and fish it around the pontoons. Put it on a jig head to fish virtually anywhere you want down through the water column, everything from tailor and salmon to get it down and catch a few snapper and that sort of thing. And then you can put a 2-0 in it on a 3 8 or a quarter ounce and throw it for tuna and mackerel and that sort of thing as well. So it's a very versatile bait fish presentation. Today we're going to get out and see if we can get a few brim and flathead on this bait fish profile. Rod wise, I've got the three combos the same rigged up here. I'm fishing a Seros 7 foot 2 to 4 kilo with a, and a Pixel XT Akuma 20 size reel and they're all loaded up with 10 pound platypus pulse braid and 10 pound hard armor leader. So let's get out there and put this little bait fish to work and see if we can find ourselves a few brim and flathead. Oh yeah, there we go. What have we got there? He drilled that up on the flats. Could be a nice brimbo, a little trev. So that's that. Quarter ounce 1 OG head, and I've got that. There's a little bit trevally ish. Got that 3.75 inch streaks in shiner, which is one of my favourite colours. Really nice, natural, bait fishy looking colour. And it is a grunter, little grunter, I was eating it. So there you go, that's that jerk shad profile, the smallest one. Oh, come on, buddy. Not a big grunter, but that's that jerk shad profile. The smallest size in the range, the 3.75 inch streaks. And I'm just twitching it on that quarter 1 0 demons just twitching it across the flats here on a dropping tide so in about a meter of water so that's not too bad a little grunter to kick things off hopefully he's got some big brothers out here so i'm basically just flicking it up on the flat there and then i was just giving it a few twitches it's predominantly sand where i am here but there is weed patches in amongst it but if you do feel it get caught in the weed a bit, you can just give it a rip and it'll often come out of the weed. So I'm just drifting over the sand and giving it a few twitches, letting it hit the bottom. Basically just working it across this bank. Very active bank, there's a fair bit of bait on it and that sort of thing, which we always look for. Hopefully we can find a couple more fish. So just let that hit the bottom, give it a few twitches hit the bottom I don't often pause a jerk shad for too long just keep it moving with a few shakes and a few twitches get that little tail going look like a bait fish that's fleeing and those predatory species will nail it
Oh, way. Official way is it gonna, you know. Yep. <clears throat> oh, we had to tease that bloke onto there then. He had a few goes at it. What are you, buddy? Hopefully you're not a long Tom. A long Tom. <laughs> I thought that might have been by the way he attacked us. <laughs> we don't really want to catch those guys. Too many teeth for the kayak. You might be able to see the water movement from the dropping tide along this edge. I'd be surprised if there wasn't a flathead lurking on this edge in that moving water. I'm just sitting, there's little undulations and weed patches and things that create ambush points. So the flathead should be laying in those ambush points, just waiting for bait to come past with the current and then boom, fish on, they'll nail them. That's the theory anyway. Yep, there we go. What are you? Might be a brimbo. A nice brim. A nice brim. That's the versatility of that 3.75 inch streaks. It's just a really nice, really nice bite sized bait fish profile. So check out the size of that guy. He's a nice brim. He's a solid brim. Good fish. There you go. That's a good handful of brim. He's in, absolutely inhaled that 3.75 inch streak, so you don't have to worry about them getting that in their gob. He's had no problem getting that down in the gob. Pop him off. There you go, there's that little bait fish profile, and there's a, a solid chunk of brim. He's away back to terrorize the bait fish. Quarter 1 0, 3.75 inch streaks. Okay, I'm going to work up into that little eddy again because I still think there's a flathead in there. I'm going to try a couple more casts. Got that shiner colour on again, just a nice natural bait fish colour. The brown's starting to go out of the water a bit here. So it's uh, starting to become a bit better colour. There's still a lot of sediment in it from all the rain, but definitely looking a bit better in terms of clarity so I'm basically paralleling this edge working along the edge of the drop off pushing my way back up into the current and just working any good edges that I see in terms of undulation or you know eddies and water movement and bait movement and that sort of thing just giving more attention to those areas show you what that brim was sitting on so the brim came right off the back of this eddy here so you can see there there's a bit of a basin created by that bank so there's a bank goes out to there there's a basin in behind it there's baited there now so that brim was sitting in that basin there just letting the water bring the food to him No, there we go, that was a brim. Oh, that was a brim. Just picked it up off the bottom that time. Oh, he's off. He wasn't as good a fish that time, but definitely got a heap of rattles that time before that brim grabbed it. So the brim are loving this little jerk bait, very bait fishy profile looking. We just keep chipping our way along this edge. See if we can get a couple more.
Yep, there we go. That is cranky. Another brimbo off the edge. Yep, not a big one again. Whoa, he's fired up. Come on, buddy. Oh, he's put up a good fight. Not a big fella. Probably legal. But again, on that 3.75 inch streaks. They're going, yep, grab that bait fish. Grab that bait fish. And I'm fishing it with an erratic retrieve, which encourages them to really just smack it. Well, under the bank again. So that little that little 3.75 inch streaks is very versatile plastic. Like we're catching brim with it at the moment. But it's you know they catch tuna, mackerel, tailor, salmon, flatties, brimbos, bass, all sorts of things eat it because it is a very good bait fish size imitation. So these brim are having no problem eating it. And I like it as a flatty presentation. Also rigs really well weedless for chasing flathead. I like it in a scent. When it's brim, especially. Little streaks has got a good spot in the gut there for some scent, where the gut, where a lot of scent will come from anyway. So that's, I like to keep it scented when the brim are there, just so they really commit and get that thing in the gob well in there so that we can get that hook set so i'm just working along back along that same bit of edge where i got the brim the first lot of brim so we'll see how we go the water's flows dropped off a little so that can drop the bite off at times so we'll just see if there's still anything interested along this edge If I take you in close here, you can see the sort of edge that I'm talking about. So it's a fair step down sharp edge. So it's a weedy rubbly bank. Mull it up on the bank there. So it's a weedy rubbly bank and you can see that that drops straight down on that edge. So there's a bit of water up on that edge. The bait's trying to hold up in there and the brim are hunting along the edge, just whacking the bait. So we're pretty much trying to keep our cast pretty close to that edge you know in sort of a within a meter of the edge or so so the brim see the plastic come out smarter and there's a lot of bait fish here so our plastic definitely doesn't look out of place so I'm just fishing the lure up and back with the current so that the bait fish twitches back realistically and naturally the brim spot it coming with the current and then they chase it and nail it. <laughs> Came back for it. That's gold. Nice little flatfish. We knew there'd be a flatty there eventually. He's now that little 3.75 inch streaks. Hey, buddy. He actually hit it and missed it. And then grabbed it again, so I thought I thought I'd miss my chance. Come on, mate. Grab that jig head and I'll get him in between the two sets of fins where I can hold him safely. Got him. Not a monster by any means, but he's grabbed that streaks twitched across the bottom. Probably on the in oh no. Hang on, buddy. Well, he's away. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> so there you go. That little presentation flicked across. Maybe I'm in half a metre of water, rubbly bottom. 
and that's very bait fishy looking and that floody's just absolutely nailed it only a little fella probably just legal maybe just over 40 42 43 so i'll sent up a bit more we'll get back in there again often that sort of size fish you can often find them schooled so hopefully he's got a few mates in there Got him on the second touch. So I've actually changed my rig up here. I'm fishing a fishing with 3.75 inch streaks on a Ned rig, just on a 1 tenth ounce orange head, just to give it that nice slow fall on the shallow edge. So I'm right up, flicking it right into the weed. Then I'm just pausing it, stalling it, then hopping it out. Come here, buddy. He's not a monster, but he's another floody. You can see how good that presentation will be in the dirty water. That's that orange one tenth ounce Nedlocks and motor oil colour in the 3.75 inch streaks. So, as we said, not a big one, but good fun. Good fun on light spin gear. Let's check him out on the measure. And he's about, oh, maybe 43, 44. So he's a legal flatty, and I'll show you that change of presentation that I'm fishing where we'll have a closer look at it. So there you go, he's scoffed that and been pinned right in the top jaw. Get out of there buddy, that's it, we're free. So he's not a bad little flatty, but I'll show you this, this is... So that's the presentation. So you get a really nice slow fall. Sits up, give it a few twitches, and then it sits up again on the bottom. You've got that bright orange head and that motor oil UV reactive plastic. So that's another way you can rig the streaks. It, you can see there, it sits pretty nice on that size one hook of the Nedlocks. And that flatty didn't mind the look of it either. Alrighty, fish on. Oh, yep, yep, right in close, there he was. Right on that weed edge. Again on the little one tenth ounce orange Nedlocks. Another little fella, but still good fun. Get in the net. That's another on that one tenth ounce Nedlocks motor oil. Orange. Orange Nedlocks one tenth motor oil colored 3.75 inch streaks. Only a baby. But where there's smoke, there's fire. Flat out of all sizes will leak this presentation, that's for sure. He scoffed it. He liked the look of that, that's for sure. He's nailed it. All right, see you, little buddy. He's away. All right, we might change it up just because we've now caught a couple of flathead in quick time on that Nedlocks. So I've demonstrated that one too. You've seen how that one works. It's really good in that shallow water and fishing those little weed edges and stuff. This is another one that's deadly effective. So especially here, we're getting into a bit more weed. So we'll have a look at weedless rigging it. So this plastic rig's brilliantly weedless. So you can see on here, that is a one sixth ounce in a one o. Pull that hook up under there and it sits in there beautifully. So it fishes really well rigged weedless put some scent on it and we'll see if we can get a fish on that one for you as well so gives you that real nice darting and gliding you've got that crazy little skinny tail get it in the water there so we've got that tail and then when it sits on the bottom that tail will stand up in the air and attract the fish and, and trigger strikes so got a bit of a leery color on there we'll step out a little bit and that'll allow us to flick it. There's a bit more, as we get along here, a bit more, there's a bit more weed growth in the water. So we'll start to foul up a bit more. So we'll change up to weedless on that 3.75 inch streaks. Weedless on a 1 sixth ounce 1 0. 
and we'll see if we can get your fish on that as well. That just gives us the ability to not fear the weed. Don't worry about the weed. Get the cast right up in there. That little fish, even though he was only a little fella, he was right up on the weed edge. So he was in almost no water. But the tide's just turning now to push in. So those fish will push right up on the edge. Trap that bait on the edge where it can't go anywhere and they'll just smash it. So hopefully we can get a flatty or some brim or something on the weedless rig. And then we've showed you the streaks, the versatility of the streaks rigged on a quarter ounce one oh demons that just hop down the edges and stuff. Rigged fish really shallow on that Ned rig. Got those two fish in quick time, two flatties. And now we're going to weedless rig it right in on this edge in amongst the weed. Great thing about it is then, you know, this plastic, you can then put it on a three eighth ounce 2-0 go and throw it at tuna and mackerel fish it deep for snapper you know it's an extremely versatile plastic i've seen guys fish it uh unweighted as well just on a, a worm hook on a chin locks so just on a chin locks finesse in say a one or one oh and just twitch it across the surface as well and catch a bunch of species trevally and brim and that sort of thing so very versatile plastic you know, from brim to tuna, pretty amazing. Oh, that was a flathead trying to eat my plastic off the top. Unbelievable, that is ridiculous. That plastic started to get away from him and he wasn't happy about it. He just came out of the water trying to eat it off the top. Yep, there he is. Got him on that second go. That's that weedless rig. That was crazy. I don't know if that was the same fish, but he dead set came out of the water to nail that. He's angry. There you go, that's the weedless rig and that's why we fish it. I was hitting that weed lump in there and I, on a standard jig head I would have fouled each time. But with that weedless jig head, boom, that fish came out of the water. I'm going to slow-mo that. Hopefully we got it on video. And um, then this little guy nailed it. Not a big fish. Securely pinned in the corner of the mouth, as they often are. Often pinned in the corner of the mouth on that weedless head. Send him back. There you go, buddy. And you can see he cleared that no problem and found the hook. So sits really nice on there. That's a 1-0. Set it up under there, and we can throw it right in amongst it. That's a pretty good little session, though, on the streaks. Just out flicking the streaks for a couple of hours. So, got a few brim, got a few flatties on a, on some different presentations. Yeah, good fun. Oh, what was that bit of weed?